Okay guys, this is part three of a seminar at Three Rivers Marine in Woodenville, Washington. We're talking about coho salmon techniques on the Puget Sound rivers. So stick around and enjoy. If you cast your lure too far up river, you will most likely hang up. You will probably lose your lure, unless you're gonna pull your anchor and go over there where the fish are that you just spooked and get your lure back, right? So, drift fishing is important on the Dick Knight lure and where you fish. This is ideal. This is ideal. That's okay. I'll just a tad high. But you need to start putting some reel on that lure because what's going to happen is your pencil lead is going to catch up on the bottom. Your dick knight on your leader is going to flop over because of the current. It's going to grab a rock, moss, tree branch, whatever. If you cast properly, it's almost not going to get hung up. Not unless you're just throwing right into a big bunch of weeds or something, right? Or a big clump of uh, tree branch. So if you're casting way up here, that's bad. Okay? You want to cast right in there. That's the ticket. Okay? Because here's the thing, guys. You're not going to catch the fish right in front of you. That's not the water you're setting up to fish. Okay? So if I'm looking straight out, the river's running down, I'm looking straight out. I'm not trying to catch that fish right here. The person that's trying to catch that fish is the person in the front of the boat. I'm trying to catch the fish over here, right? You kind of split it up into A, it's where my stuff lands. B, it's where it drifts through. C, it's at the end of the drift. And D, I'm not doing anything, right? We want to fish B. So you want to get your lure out into A, it starts settling, it starts working through the current, now you're catching fish in B, okay? Presentation. The spoon should have a wobbling action as it moves slowly through the water. It's a wobbler. It's not a spinner, okay? And I'm going to show you a video here in a second. If you guys have not seen this before, I think you're going to be amazed at what the Dick Knight spoon is supposed to look like. If you have little or no current, real, but not like this. I mean like this. Oh, you want to talk about pulling teeth with a pair of pliers. It's painstaking. It is. But it's, it only takes a little bit of action, okay? If there's more current, you probably don't even need to reel. Or maybe you just, you know, half a crank through the whole drift, okay? Let me show you this video here. This is normal speed on a 50-50. That's what it looks like. If you're achieving the perfect drift, this is what it looks like. This is slow motion. Look at what it's doing. The hook is up, it's by design, and it's wobbling from side to side. It does not rotate. If your lure rotates over, it's because you're reeling too fast, you're not going to catch a fish. It has to achieve the proper action. This is the Nickelback Frog. This is slow motion right there. Look at how that's moving. And again, the hook is up. I've had people see this video and look at me and go, I've been doing it all wrong. Okay, we've all done it all wrong sometimes, right? It happens. So, Dick Knight lures, don't mess with the hooks. Don't add anything to them. Fish the lure as it comes out of the package. On a number one, you have a ring. Tie your line directly to the ring. This is it right here, guys. That's a setup right there. And I'll show it to you bigger on the screen here in just a second. You tie that leader right to the ring. If you fish a number two, size two, it's bigger. It has a little um, clip on there or a little barrel swivel. Tie to that. 
If you do want to lighten it up, take that off. You're going to have to cut it off. Cut it off and tie it to the ring. But don't use a snap swivel and snap your dick knight into it. I can't tell you guys how many anglers I've seen fishing, frustrated, cussing, because I'm hooking fish in front of them and they're taking, you know, they're, they're mad. Can't get a fish. You're fishing over me, right in front of me, and I can't get a fish. You're getting a fish. I literally said, hey, what are you, I'm fishing Dick Knight. Well, how do you have it tied up? Well, I've got a leader, and I've got this weight, and I've got a snap swivel, and I hooked my Dick Knight onto it. Yeah, you just killed the action. The lure must action properly. Okay, let's look at the setup. Main line, okay. You don't have to set yours up like I do, but how many, and let's be honest, show of hands, how many of you guys have ever reeled your gear in and over reeled and all of a sudden it stops? Be honest. Come on, yeah, I see the heads moving, maybe the hands aren't coming up. My rods are 350 bucks. I don't care if you spend 75 bucks or 350 bucks on a rod, you don't want to damage the eye. Even on a $75 rod, I don't want to have to go buy another one because I was a ding dong and I reeled my gear into it. Put a five millimeter bead on your main line first. They're cheap, they've got hordes of them out here. Put a five millimeter bead on. Then put your snap swivel, right? That bead will protect the eye of your rod. It's, it's huge. And it's what, a penny for a 10? Then I put a four millimeter bead on. I put that bead on to protect the knot to my barrel swivel, okay? Because I don't want that swivel with the weight banging against my knot. Next thing you know, I lose a fish because my knot broke. And then of course, I put on a three to five foot leader, eight pound, and then my dick knight. That's the setup right there for drift fishing. That's the setup I'll use for drift fishing. It's the same setup I'll use for cheaters and yarn. It's the same setup I use for fishing eggs and easy eggs, okay? If I'm drift fishing or I'm free drifting, that's it. And essentially, that's the same setup if I'm gonna plunk. The only difference is where the weight is, I'll put a dropper depending upon how deep I wanna be off the bottom and then I'll put my weight on the end of that, right? And on droppers, guys, if you're gonna go plunking, use floral carbon for your droppers. It's really stiff and it won't wrap around your main line, right? Cool little trick. I like sliding setups, the sliding weight. I use that because it reduces line twist. If you are old school and you cannot change and you must use a three-way, use a three-way. There's nothing wrong with it, okay? But I like the sliding setup. Uh, the weight that you used, it should be just enough to tick across the bottom. I fish 316 spins of lead. I pre-cut all of my lead. I've got a lead box in there and it is loaded from three quarter, half an inch, all the way up to two inches, two and a quarter, I'm sorry. Um, I want just enough to tick across the bottom because I want the lure to do its job. I don't want the weight to hang up and then the lure lays over or my, lay, my eggs lay over because of the current. So just enough weight to tick across the bottom, six to eight feet. Every six to eight feet, you should feel a tick, okay? Already talked about the droppers, the fluorocarbon on droppers. Once you, if you fish 3 16 pencil lead, once you get over two and a quarter inches, you might as well grab half ounce cannonballs. Because when you go to two and a half inches on 3 16 lead, it's, the, it's half ounce. So if you like pouring cannonballs, you buy them, you might as well just do that, unless you just want to keep. I pulled in some junk the other day. This guy lost, it was a piece of pencil lead like this long. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm like, what is this guy doing? Match your leaders to your main line. If you're fishing from a bank and you want to drift fish and you're fishing ultralight setup, fish 12 pound main line, 10 pound leaders. You got to go a little heavier because you got to keep the fish in the hole with you. You don't want your fish running down river, okay? Keep it with you, go a little heavier, all right? Um, but leader length is absolutely, absolutely dictated by visibility. Right now, it is gin clear. As it darkens up, I'll start shortening up my leaders and I'll probably be fishing about four, five foot leaders 
for my dick nights, my cheaters and yarn, and my eggs as well. Okay, I see this a lot. Line tension, line tension, line tension. You guys, you can't have a bunch of slack in your line if you're drift fishing. One, you're gonna miss that the fish is hitting. Um, and two, you're not going to stay in the spot you want to drift. If you've got slack in your line, Kurt's going to grab the slack. And it's going to pull you out of where you're trying to fish. And chances are you're going to hang up. So keep the correct tension on your line. Okay? But don't have so much tension that you lose contact with the bottom with your weight. Okay? Keep your rod tip pointed at the line at all times. So if I cast up here and my gear's drifting down, don't hold your rod here and let your gear drift. Follow your line because you guys, when you set the hook on these salmon, you want to set it straight up, not sideways. You want to hook them in their mouth. You don't want to pull it out at the moment they open their mouth. And that's happened to people before. Okay? If you guys will fish the Snohomish and Skycomish frequently, you'll keep up with the changes. It's a river. It changes. It changes. Yes, sir? Uh, do you have a recommendation for a bank rod? A bank rod? I'd fish this right here from the bank. I'd fish this from the bank, absolutely. I would just put 12 pound line on it, okay? The rods that we use in the boat, you can use them on the bank too, guys. There's nothing special about them just because you're in a boat. All right, guys, that wraps it up for part three. Make sure you move on to part four for some more great information to help you be successful on the Puget Sound Rivers for Coho Salmon. Three Rivers Marine and Tackle, your one-stop store for all your fishing needs.